Students, all right. Now, back to hypoglycemia, which is an emergency life-threatening event. All right, according to the text, the Linden text, uh, hypoglycemia, mild, moderate hypoglycemia, can be from 50 to 70 milligrams per deciliter. Okay? But it can go down, go down, go down. Below 50, the text is careful to tell us that some patients may have no signs and symptoms of a hypoglycemic episode, kind of like a Trojan horse, you know? They don't even know it. But, so, they can have it below 50 milligrams and they don't even know it. Could be dangerous. Okay, now, hypoglycemic episode, according to our text, again, is divided into two phases. Okay, and it's a progressive thing. There's a phase one, if it's not reversed, goes to phase two, all right? Some people go straight to phase two without even going to a phase one, so keep that in mind. But let's go to phase one. All right, their blood sugar is going down, how does the body respond? The blood sugar is going down, how does the body respond? Do you remember your fight-flight response? You remember that, the adrenergic, the fight-flight response? Okay, well, you have a uh, fight-flight response. The autonomic nervous system is kicking in to try and bring it back. And a couple of telltale signs, shakiness, shakiness. Tachycardia, the heart rate goes up. Nervousness, nervousness, anxiety. I call this the shake, the shake response. Shakiness, tachycardia, nervousness, anxiety. Everything's kind of speeded up. Okay, that's phase one. A little bit more of phase one. What about the head? What about the mind? Lightheadedness, irritability. They may not be in a very good mood when this is happening. Hunger. They're hungry. Why are they hungry? Well, the blood sugar's down. What about the tongue? Dig this. Tingling and numbness of the tongue. Tingling and numbness of the tongue. But probably one of the most easiest to notice is diaphoresis. Diaphoresis, profound sweating. It's been my experience when I've had patients who go through this, that after we took care of the episode, the hypoglycemic episode, I had to fix their bed. Why? The sheets were saturated with sweat. Diaphoresis. Shakiness, diaphoresis, strong indicators of a hypoglycemic episode. Now, supposing phase one progresses to phase two. Now we're in more serious trouble. Phase two, Neuroglucopenia. Remember, penia is deficiency. Neuro. What this basically means is not enough sugar to the brain. Okay, not enough sugar to the brain. Shortage of glucose to brain. Now, what are some of the signs? What are some of the symptoms? As far as the thinking, they're going to feel drowsy. Impaired judgment. Disorientation. Think about impaired judgment. If they're at this phase, are they going to be able to get themselves out of this problem? Hmm, I don't think so. How come? impaired judgment. Now what about their moods? Mood swings, irritability, remember we mentioned irritability with phase one, but irritability in phase two. Also headaches. Mood swings, irritability, headache. Now I call the other problem the urs, the urs, blurred vision, slurred speech. They're not going to be able to communicate very clearly to you that they're in trouble. What we have here with the neuroglucopenia phase is a patient who's in trouble and they don't have the ability, it looks like, to get themselves out. Now, if not reversed, if not reversed, if we don't turn this around, loss of consciousness, they can go into convulsion, seizures, coma, and eventually death. Okay? So, and repeat. Again, we were talking about the emergency of a hypoglycemic episode. We gave the numbers, could be a moderate 50 to 70, but below, it can go way below 50. Some patients don't even have signs and symptoms when their blood sugar is below 50 milligrams per deciliter. We know that when they have responses divided into two, phase one is a fight flight response. I think we can identify shakiness and a lot of sweat. And phase two is when the brain, the thinking is being affected, neuroglycopenic, um, which eventually can lead to, if not reversed, convulsions, coma, death.
Thanks for listening.